Namaste. So here we go with the beginning, <laughs> the first few shlokas of the Shiva Sahasranama. Now, this version is drawn from the Shiva Purana. The introduction that we just went through in the previous series is drawn from Mahabharata. And as we noted, the Shiva Sahasranama appears twice in Mahabharata. The first time spoken by Upamanyu at the passing of Bhishma Dev, and the second time by Krishna when he's trying to get the Pashupati weapon from Lord Shiva. So we're going to switch to the second scene as it's recounted not in Mahabharata, but in Shiva Purana, because I think it's older and more authentic. So basically what happens is the sages, the demigods, are trying to satisfy Lord Shiva. And they heard that Krishna had got the Pashupati weapon from Shiva. So they approached Krishna and said, well, how did you do it? <laughs> you know, how did you? Because usually Shiva reserves the Pashupati Astra just for himself. But he shared it with Krishna because he was so pleased by Krishna's devotion, enchanting the thousand names that he had heard from Upamanyu. See, so the story is Krishna was on his way to do devotional service to Shiva on Kailash, and he met Upamanyu on the way. And Upamanyu said, if you're going to please Shiva, you really need to recite his thousand names. So Upamanyu taught Krishna the thousand names, and then Krishna repeated them to Shiva and pleased Shiva so much that he received Pashupati Astra. So what we're going to hear now is Sutta Goswami's repetition or recitation of these thousand and eight names chanted by Krishna. And Sutta is speaking to the assembly of sages at Naimashiranya. Naimashiranya is the place where after the Battle of Kurukshetra and basically the collapse of the Vedic Empire, Sutta Goswami was leading the sages in a thousand-year sacrifice during which they would hear the different scriptures, prayers, Puranas, and so on that are just essential for people in Kali Yuga because in Kali Yuga, of course, Everything is so messed up. So in order to set the tone for the pious people in Kali Yuga, they decided to have this thousand years of hearing, shruti. Uh, so because in Kali Yuga, hearing the chanting of the holy name is really the only dharma. All the other forms of dharma have become corrupt. And if you go around to different religious organizations, you'll see this in action. Uh, the people have become mad with power and taken over these powerful spots in religious organizations, and they're using them for their own agendas, whatever they are. We don't even want to know what they are. They want to control the people's views about God and religion because they really don't want anybody to get self-realized because a self-realized person is impossible to control. They know who they are. They know who God is. And they know their relationship with God. And, of course, once you know that, nothing in the world can convince you otherwise. So I had been working the last few days to figure out a way that we can hear these names and become familiar with them and chant along with them and so on. So what I'm going to do is take three or four shlokas at a time in every video and repeat them three times so that you can chant along with it and get familiar with these shlokas. 
and then I'm also going to upload that audio to my account on the internet, in which all of this is linked in the video description, so that you can hear it whenever you want. So here goes. Here are the first three shlokas of Sri Shiva Sahasranama. Aum Suta Uvacha Shruyatam Rishaya Shreshta Katayami Yata Shrutam Vishnuna Pratito Yena Santushta Parameshwaraha Tadahang Katayam Yadya Punyang Nama Sahasrakam Aum Sri Vishnu Ruvacha Shivo haro mrado rudra pushkara pushpalo chanaha Artigamya sadachara sarva shangbhur maheshwaraha Chandra pidas chandra maulir vishvang vishvang bhareshwaraha Vedang tasara sangdoha kapali nila lohitaha Aum Suta Uvacha Shruyatam Rishaya Shreshta Katayami Yata Shrutam Vishnuna Pratito Yena Santushta Parameshwaraha Tadahang Katayam Yadya Punyang Nama Sahasrakam Aum Sri Vishnu Uvacha Shivo haro mrado rudra pushkara pushpalo chanaha Artigamya sadachara sarva shangbhur maheshwaraha Chandra pidas chandra maulir vishvang vishvang bhareshwaraha Vedang tasara sangdoha kapali nila lohitaha Aum Suta Uvacha Shruyatam Rishaya Shreshta Katayami Yata Shrutam Vishnuna Pratito Yena Santushta Parameshwaraha Tadahang Katayam Yadya Punyang Nama Sahasrakam Aum Sri Vishnu Uvacha Shivo haro mrado rudra pushkara pushpalo chanaha Artigamya sadachara sarva shangbhur maheshwaraha Chandra pidas chandra maulir vishvang vishvang bhareshwaraha Vedang tasara sangdoha kapali nila lohitaha So now let's look into the meaning of each and every verse, and actually each and every word once we get to the actual names. The first verse, Sutta Goswami is addressing the sages at Naimisharanya. Shrutayam Burishaya, let the sages hear this. Uh, this Srishta Katayami, this extremely auspicious recitation. Yata shrutam. Hear this. Vishnu na pratito yena. That uh, Vishnu recited these thousand names of Vishnu. Santushta parameshwaraha. And Shiva. <laughs> Shiva became extremely pleased. <laughs> and see, this is so blissful because when Shiva is called. He immediately appears. <laughs> so as soon as we invoke his holy names, we come immediately into his presence, and this is called Shiva Yoga. It means linking up with Shiva, connecting with Shiva, and since Shiva is bliss, <laughs> this is very blissful, and this gets our day off to a great start. So, uh, Santushta Parameshwara, he's very pleased to hear his holy names. 
Tadaham katayam yadya, that this uh, hem is indeed punyang namasahasrakam. It's in so auspicious. It's such good karma. It gives actually the most auspicious effect of any prayer. Well, we've already been over that in the introduction. So then let's take a look at really, well, it's the second verse by number, but it's the first verse of the actual holy names. Sri Vishnu Uvacha, Lord Vishnu said, Shiva, pure, auspicious, Hara, the Caesar, sometimes is known as the thief, huh? because he already owns everything. It's all his. In some sense, it's all him, because he is the root substance, the pure consciousness, Brahman, the objectless, pure awareness at the root of all things. I mean, just think of it. Without consciousness, there isn't anything. So consciousness is really the foundation, the support of everything. And as soon as we realize Shiva, then our consciousness becomes transcendental. It's a whole new uh, realm of being. It's so wonderful. So he takes away, Hara, takes away all our ignorance, takes away all our stupid desires uh, that entrap us in this material world. And he reveals the actual situation which is what? Mrda. He's compassionate. He's merciful. He's gracious. He's kind. Mrda. See, it, it seems sometimes contradictory that Shiva kills so many demons and in the end he destroys the whole material world. So maybe he's a, you know, he's a mean guy, right? He's a mean God. But again, this is based on compassion. He's taking away the things that trap us, especially our pride and our desires, because our desires are the things that trap us in the material world. So this is compassion. This is real love. Rudra. Rudra is the expansion of Shiva in the material world. And Rudra really has quite a few different definitions, but the ones that are appropriate here are terrible and time. He is the fire. It, Rudra is very closely associated with fire because he uses fire, Agni, to burn the universe at the end of the creation. So he is the terrible fire of time, Rudra. And by this burning fire, everyone is motivated. And what are we motivated for? To get out of this material existence. This material existence is like a womb where we become finally what we want to be for eternity. These material bodies are just temporary. They're just for practice. Huh? They're just a warm-up so we can learn about spiritual things and attain our real existence in the spiritual world. Pushkar. Pushkar means the sky, it means dancing. It also means nourishment or nourisher. The sky, I mean, Shiva is dancing in the sky. Huh? Can you see him? He's dancing in the sky. And also the sky provides us with nourishment, light, air, water in the form of rain, see, without which life is not possible. The sun is the origin and the power of life. Yet the sun is also fire, and it destroys our life. It burns up our life one day at a time. So Shiva is both. See, his compassion, but his compassion is kind of tough love. He puts us in a situation where we are forced to develop self-realization or 
uh, we just suffer like anything. So we have to do this sadhana to realize our true self. Pushpalochana. His eyes are like blooming flowers. Huh? He's so happy. He's so blissful. This is why we want to associate with Shiva. His association is so blissful. It's so happy. I mean, we almost don't care what happens, you know, in this material world. If we can have this bliss, it's like the ultimate drug, the ultimate high, <laughs> because it's unconditional. Whatever is happening in the world, whatever is happening in our lives, by association with Shiva, we transcend it and attain happiness. Artigamya. Artigamya means he is approachable by the devotees. Shiva is very approachable. All you have to do is chant his name, all Namah Shivaya. Instantly you get reciprocation. Don't just watch this video and then go off and do other things and forget about it. Chant these names and get this response from Shiva. You can feel it very quickly. It doesn't take a long time, but it does take concentration and purity of intent. Sadachara. Why? Because Sadachara means truthful living or eternity, living in eternity, living in purity. His conduct is pure and noble. See, he is not taken in by the material illusion. He's the basis of it. So it doesn't affect him. And if we associate with him, he will pull us out of it. Sharva. Sharva means the god who slays the enemies with arrows. What are the enemies? Lust, greed, avarice, untruthfulness, fabrications. See, all this nonsense, material work, greed, and so on. He slays all those enemies. And Shambhu. Shambhu means he who grants happiness. He causes happiness simply by his presence. He's the most wonderful God. Maheshwara. Maheshwara means the sovereign, the great sovereign of the universe. He who is the final authority. Now let's look at the next verse. Chandrapida. He has the moon for his chaplet. What is a chaplet? Huh? Well, I looked it up. And it's a little crown of beads. You see on Shiva's picture, on top of his head, he has his hair round up in a top knot, and then he has some Rudraksha beads around it. It's a string of 54 beads. 54, of course, is half of 108. And so this is used for japa. And you see Shiva with japa mala in his hand, always chanting some mantra. What is he chanting? His own names. <laughs> so then Chandramauli, with the moon for his crest jewel. It's like a little crown that he wears that has a beautiful jewel in it, a golden crown with, with a Chintamani jewel. Vishwa. He is the entire universe. He is everything. Vishvambareshwara. He is the all-sustaining Lord. Everything depends on him. Everything is coming from him. Everything is supported by him. That's his ontological position. And the next one is one of my favorites. Vedanta Sara Sangdoha. Vedanta, of course means the final conclusion of the Vedas. And Sar means essence, like we used to call this channel, Dharma Sar, essence of Dharma. But here we're talking about the essence of Vedanta. Samoha. I had to look this one up in the Sanskrit dictionary. It's a special word. It means like an unending ocean. Someone who can bestow innumerable 
or unlimited benedictions. So, of course, if he bestows the final essence, the, the concentrated essence of Vedanta, but this is the greatest benediction imaginable because it's everything. And kapali means one who holds a water pot or a skull in his hand. Sometimes you see the Tibetan yogis especially use a skull as a water pot. Kind of grisly, but uh, we see Shiva with water pot uh, and uh, when he's meditating especially. That's his visage as a sage. And finally, Nila Lohitaha. Nila Lohita is a special color. It's like a dark blue color with a tinge of red. And this describes Shiva's bodily color. His color is dark blue, and parts of it, like the palms of the hands, the soles of the feet, his lips, his other parts of his body, are reddish. So it's like a dark purple color. It's a very amazing color. It's a wonderful, deep spiritual color. That's our Shiva. So before next time, you should listen to the recording that's linked in the video description and try to uh, come become familiar with these holy names because these will bestow the greatest blessing the most auspicious possible thing that you could get in this human life. Aung Tatsat. Aung Shakti Aung. Aung Namah Shivaya.